when I came in second at Team Masters. Mm -hmm. I think, I believe both years, I led the tournament by 200 pounds. <laughs> Not everyone can have their parents propel them to being nationally great, and I would say that it's probably pretty rare to have that happen. But what was what was the practice process like? Was it was it mostly like at homework? Did it did it encapsulate your entire mind when you were at school, or was it just something that it was like I just really like it and I just want to do this? Um, I will say that it wasn't forced on me because yeah. once I once I got to the point where I was like I want to do this, and I like I like I love it. Uh, I loved practicing. And I think even to this day, I really do enjoy practicing. Um, I just love being on the lanes. Uh, I think my favorite is when nobody's in the center and it's just like just me in the lane. Mm -hmm. like it just has this nice little, I, I don't know, it's, it's my release, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, something for me to focus on it and have something to drive towards. Mm -hmm. um, but bowling captured my mind in every way possible. Um, Let's see. It starts with me always practicing at home. Like, mm -hmm. didn't miss practices at home. Uh, I practiced four to six hours a day on the lane. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> That's a I lot. Bowl, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it wasn't like going out there and bowling, like, uh, just throwing strike balls and trying to pull high games. Like, mm -hmm. it was me working on either things that my coach, like, my goal every week was that every time I see my coach, I want him to be like, wow, you got this down already? Okay, guess what? We get to work on something. I always looked for that that excitement from him. So I worked really hard so that, like, I can get that from him every single week. Mm -hmm. um, so then when it came to, like, me developing my own practices, like, things that people wouldn't do would be, like, practicing their 10 pins or their 7 pins and their spare shooting. And I'd spend games just shooting spares. Um, I would practice different target lines. I would play up the gutter. I'd play deep. And then I like I'd make these own little games for myself where what's the highest score I could play while playing the gutter on one lane and then deep on the other lane. Mm -hmm. And when I started shooting like 200s doing that, um, I would start doing it with maybe different releases. Or I remember one time I put in like I had, let's say like four or five different bowling balls. And I put up four or five different games and every bowling, I had a, like, line up with each bowling ball mm -hmm. and see which ball is going to get the highest game. Mm -hmm. And honestly, out of anything, that was probably the most challenging thing that I did. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, then you have practices with release and then you have just like, I just practice every part of the game to make myself as much as versatile as I could. Because, mm -hmm. you know, especially back then, more so than I think of now is that the game was even different. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's evolved now differently than it was back then. And being versatile was very important. Mm -hmm. in my, I mean, it still is. But a lot of, I feel like now, because of between how um, the equipment is advanced and uh, just being able to drill bowling balls like that, you know, it, it kind of just takes a little bit of that versatility out. Not that you don't need it. You still do. But um, it's probably not as crucial as it used to be. If yeah. That's it, oh, yeah. No, that totally makes sense. Um, which it, it, I, I want to go one direction, but I want to focus on the versatility side and get into the teen masters thing, because that competition since its inception has been all about versatility and being able to play where the lanes tell you to play. Now I never participated in it, but I have watched a ton of it and I understand it pretty deeply and I really appreciate it. So tell me about that process of, you know, because you had probably had to play everywhere on the lanes to be even be minorly successful, let alone win it. Um, what was that like? I mean, that's that's pretty awesome to have gone from I didn't bowl to <laughs> Teen Masters champ in five years. Yeah, it was. Um, it was something that I loved. I loved because that was something that like I already practiced. I already practiced play on one one ball, one lane, one or the other, and all of a sudden now they have a tournament that's like them. I'm like, well, great, I can do that. Mm -hmm. I already do this all the time, anyways. Um, but truthfully, the first year that, uh, when I came in second at Team Masters, mm -hmm. I think, I believe both years, I led the tournament by 200 pounds. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and that's not an over-exaggeration. I'm pretty sure that's what the numbers were. Yeah. Um, but before bowling Team Masters, um, I had a really bad outing at Junior Gold. Okay. And I remember I just had this phone call with my coach and I was just like, I'm done. I can't handle this. Like, cause I, you have to understand, I am so competitive and so, like, 
dealing with that pain of like losing was very, very hard to deal with. And I, I was like, I'm, I'm already committed. I'm going this tournament. I'm here, but I, I don't even care about it. I was like, oh, whatever, get a bullet. And then I'm quitting bowling after this. I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to bowl anymore. And then, yeah, obviously I go out there now, like you just swings relax because you're like, I don't care. I'm, not, I'm done with bowling after this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Then you start leading it. And now I'm on national TV and now I'm doing all these things. I'm like, I guess I'm not quitting now. 